This is the Canon C500 Mark II and it's DP Chris Haggerty's baby. That's right. He sleeps with it. He eats lunch with it. He even uses it to floss his teeth. This is the Sony Venice 2, the predecessor of this camera, shot movies such as Top Gun Maverick, Wakanda Forever, the Star Wars Andor series, Severance, which we both love, The Whale, which was nominated for an Oscar, and many other feature films and Netflix series, which Netflix is going down in the tubes, but that's neither here nor there. So in this video, I'm going to prove to Chris that unequivocally the Sony Venice 2 is better than the Canon C500. Mark too. That's a little bit of an extreme comparison, Dave. I mean, there's like a $40,000 price difference here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Listen, if the C500 wins, I'll eat my hat. And I'm not talking about a nibble, I'm talking about the whole thing. Well, let's go then. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video to see the footage from the C500 Mark II and the Venice II. Yeah. And action. Beginning of the day, I got my coffee. We're getting started. This is Adam from Contrast City. They were kind enough to let us mm -hmm. use this in mm -hmm. our comparison. Walk us through some of the things that make this different. My personal favorite is uh, this has every stop of ND. A lot of times you don't even need a matte box unless you're stacking like fun filters kind of thing. Um, so it, it does allow you, even though it's a very heavy camera, it does allow you to be a little more run and gun. In previous version of this also, you needed a raw recorder. Correct. Now, now it's all built in. So it's, it's yeah. very much smaller setup. I hesitate to say run and gun because it weighs yeah. 10 pounds, but Four. it is very small. That's what she he said, <clears throat> no, mm -hmm. Chase, come on in here for a second. You love this camera, the Venice 2. Tell us why, as an AC, what are some things you love about My it? My favorite thing by far is definitely being able to work off this side right here. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all assignable function buttons here. Full menu. I can menu. get to playback right here pretty easily. You can lock it if I need to. Super easy to change. And the base settings, everything. And then you can even flip to the other side. I virtually have everything on this side as well if I need it. More function buttons for ND. The ND is mind blowing mm -hmm. to me. That it's so granular and it has everything you need. You don't have to use the EVF, it's kind yeah. of an optional supporting accessory. And it's literally just if your operator likes looking through mm -hmm. it, that's the only reason to have The it. flexibility of this yeah. camera, I would say, is unmatched at the cinema level. All right, so we're getting this thing set up right now. Let's go back cool. to like 6,000. Isn't it cool how like, as the DP, you're looking at the image and then your AC is like adjusting things for you as you're saying it, because all the buttons and the screen is here for him to operate, it's great. Yeah, but it has literally nothing to do with image quality what you just said, so. Yeah, but it has a lot to do with Rolling. speed on set. Am I right, corporate America? Why am I the face of corporate? Why is it so much brighter all of a sudden? That doesn't make any sense. Why did we gain two stops? It got darker. What? Is it the ISO? This is great for content four, four, because four, four, Chris four. and Dave have this posture as sort of being these experts in their respective fields. But as you can clearly see, they're fumbling their way through. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. Subscribe. So I'm rolling right now. One thing I'm noticing is it looks like there's more vignetting on my camera, which means I might have a bigger sensor. Ooh, bigger? I don't know, mine's open gate. But doesn't it look like there's more vignetting? Which would mean if we're both- Yeah, that, well, we'll just have to look, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I have open gate and you don't. You know, that's what they always say. If you like it, gotta put an open gate on it. <laughs> yeah, if you like it, then you gotta open gate on it. This is definitely how most YouTubers shoot their videos. <laughs> yeah. You're doing awesome. Thank you so much for yeah. being willing to play ball. I thought you were talking to me. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> This is so out of place. <laughs> Chris, how did how did this go? This little sequence here, you like? Yeah, it? I, I love the the look we got. Everything's looking really cool. I'm really interested to see how these cameras come out from just on set looking in monitors. We can't really compare or mm -hmm. kind of draw any. I'm falling asleep. Let's move on. So next, we're going to like a skate shop. So we'll be getting some folks kind of building skateboards and stuff in like a little wood shop. Not on camera, that's the worst part. Ah, I remember when the guy came to school and tried to sell these? Yeah, yeah dude. All the tricks and shit. Right, I was like, can you walk the dog right now? Yeah. Oh, come on, get it right, get it right, get it right, get it right. Oh. Yeah! Oh, okay, yeah. So so where there were smartphones, they were yo yo, and they were the best thing to play with next to Beyblades. So, this is basically going to be our dynamic oh, yeah. range test because it's yeah. overcast yeah. outside. Exactly. It doesn't really give you a true example of the dynamic range capabilities of each of these cameras. So, we kind of recreated our sunlight. So, we have a high contrast contrast scene. We've got a dark sweater interior and then really, really bright sunlight from an Aperture 1200D actually coming in the bay door. So that's going to give us that high contrast. <laughs> I guess Dave was bored. Called retention. Should I keep going? I don't know what to do. Golly. Uh, whatever. Rolling. What's wrong? I, C500 treating you poorly? No, not at all. It's too good. That's the problem. Oh, no, I was just thinking, I wish I had my light meter. Okay. What if you were just a DP that understood light intuitively oh. and just took a view Rolling camera. Scene Camera's rolling. Six stops of ND. Yeah, I just look here, I 800 say, uh, ISO. Yeah, just, Dave, you're in the shop. They're actually friends. So what's interesting oh, is it I seems like my 500, I'm getting like a little bit more vignetting than I'm noticing on this, which I 
think yeah. would mean I have a larger sensor. Yeah, it's a slightly wider field of view, it seems. Maybe right. your sensor is physically larger, but obviously the Venice is bigger than yours. Okay. Boom! You can only Burn! Apparently, <laughs> right now look at that image. Yeah. So you can only use the full sensor when it's raw, apparently. It's bad. Oh. Okay, so we're doing our low light test now, and we're starting actually at a low ISO setting because there are reasons to actually go below your base. Sorry, let's do that again. I did a big... But there are reasons to shoot actually below the base ISO. Tell us about that. Yeah, so on cinema cameras, uh, you can actually shift your dynamic range to favor either the shadows or the highlights. So you get more dynamic range in the highlights uh -huh. if you shoot at a higher ISO outdoors, mm -hmm. or you get more dynamic range in the shadows if you shoot at a lower dynamic range indoors. Kind of shifting with the tide, if you will. Yep. That's a wrap, everybody! <laughs> now it's time to find out if Chris is gonna throw his C500 Mark II in the That's trash. I didn't agree to that, Dave. I'm not throwing away my camera. Or if I'm gonna eat my hat. Quick shout out to Contrast Cine for letting us use the Venice yesterday for our shoot and these Cook S4 lenses. Now these lenses that we used for the shoot are actually initially designed for Super 35 sensors, but the 50 millimeter in particular actually does cover full frame fairly well. Both the Venice and the C500 are full frame sensors. So we're gonna get a little bit of a vignette with this lens, but it's not that bad. So without any further ado, let's look at our footage. Let's take a look. So for this first scene, we have Kate sitting in a chair. As you're seeing here with all four of these shots, we did switch between the baked in footage. So on the Canon, that would be considered the XF AVC. And then on the Sony, we were shooting at the maximum ProRes setting that was available. It's a 4444XQ, is yep, that right? XQ. Yeah, so it's like a bunch of fours, basically. <laughs> so we're looking at the LUTs provided by each manufacturer as well. Obviously, you're going to do your own color grading and you may want to use a very creative LUT. Chris Haggerty has his own LUT that he uses on his C500. So every time we used that camera, he's like, oh, it looks so good. Oh, this looks Alone. so good. Well, yeah, it's your LUT, boy. So let's dive deep into the color of each image here from the raw of each camera. One thing I'm noticing is that there's obviously a color difference here. You can see that Canon leans far more towards the kind of like magenta-y mm -hmm. uh, tones, and Sony is the polar opposite and kind of leans towards more of the greener tones. I will say that the Sony does have a very natural look to it. I mean, it's not a- Like beautiful, it's kind of more just what it is. As far as dynamic range, I'd say both cameras are handling all <laughs> layers of dynamic range here well. We've got yeah. that bright window behind her. If you were to grade this, if you really wanted to save the highlights in her hair on the top of her head, it looks like you probably could. One thing I'll say is that the Sony for sure looks a bit sharper. As it should. I mean, we're talking about two extra Ks. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Zoomed in a thousand percent. I don't know how to zoom with a trackpad. I should have taken you up on the mouse. Okay. So definitely some little ants running around in here. Not the end of the world, that's easy to clean up. This is at the native ISO, which is 800. This would be the native on the Venice as well, and I see more noise. Whoa! Yeah, but it, is it cleaner noise? I don't know. I was gonna say, there's definitely less color, but wow, that is significant. I am shocked by that, honestly. Points for the cannon? I mean, th there's no way. That's a, like this, the Sony is known for low light. Because it was an overcast day during this shoot, we actually had to kind of create our own contrasty environment. So this scene, we have a very bright source in the back giving us kind of a hair light and then two additional fill and key lights in, in the scene. So let's look at the dynamic range performance of the Canon RAW and the Sony RAW here with a very contrasty scene. We got some haze, so that's gonna like kind of help with smooth out some of that contrast. But again, that's pretty even across both of these cameras. They don't look necessarily like one is necessarily outperforming the other. So okay, if we look into our Canon here, so it looks like we are clipping, because you can kind of see this little bow right here is That's, where that is. Look at that, we recovered it all. Nice, so you pull it down. Yeah, because if, it, if it's truly, truly clipping, when you pull that down, you'll just see a straight line across. So this means we didn't actually clip that. Looks like we're not clipping on the Sony either. So what's interesting is, that I guess this would just be a manufacturer LUT, but Canon lets their shadows actually fall to pure black. This is crushed because the lens isn't feeding information to mm -hmm. the sensor right here. So yeah, that is a... that would be pure black, whereas Sony actually lifts that. The truth is, is when we look at both images here and we look at the, the scopes, both are holding all the dynamic range. Let's zoom into the shadows and see what kind yeah, of great call. Uh, noise we can see here. It does seem like the Canon's noise jumps out a bit more here. It looks almost like the image is kind of falling apart. And again, it's definitely far more chromatic. Whereas again, jumping over to the Sony, it looks more black and white and it doesn't seem like the image is 
kind of falling apart quite as much. That's a noise that is acceptable in cinema because it could be passed off as film grain. Which a lot of people find pleasing. In fact, some some films have started printing their edits on film and then rescanning right? it. Right? To have... Dune. Yeah, to Gr have Grant Fraser did that with Dune. But you were expecting, based off of our experience using the hybrid cameras, that we'd see a perfectly clean image. Yeah, quite a bit, but yeah. I, my theory too with Sony really is, and we can see the Venice versus the A7R5 video we will have on this channel. So make sure to check that out. We'll link it in the description. Those hybrid cameras, they do have a lot of baked in uh, noise reduction to it. So that's why it's just so clean. We're talking about film set environment and commercial environment with professional colorists. They don't want the camera to do anything. They're, right. That's their job is to color it exactly how it should be. Right. That's what you pay for. You right. pay you pay more for less. As far as the noise comparison, I am, I am pretty shocked how similar they are. But the, I, I would say the Sony is winning here. The noise is yeah. far less distracting. Canon is is maybe a little blockier, but again, 8K image versus 6K image and, and 16,000 16, versus 16,000. 16, so with that being said, let's jump over to the ISO test and see for certain what dual native ISO actually looks like. Tell us why we started at 200. 400. It was a lot easier to just go to jump by full stops, which yeah. is doubling the light in this case. If you start at 200, a full stop would then double that, which is 400. Mm -hmm. If you double that, that's 800. So it keeps our exposure the same and all you're seeing is the noise level changing. That the Sony Venice is gonna crush your 500 Mark II simply because of the dual native ISO. Yeah, it's right. Basically, as soon as we go into that setting and going from 800 to 3200 as our new bait, that same number of range of stops, starting at 3200 is the same noise level as 800. So there shouldn't be really any comparison there. So Canon 12,800. So this is that's the this is top high. end. The top end, 25,000, and you can see there's a lot of noise. Let's go to 3,200. That'd kind of be the top range of what I would usually do comfortably. Also, notice yeah. how much color 16. shifting happens too. Yeah. So 1,600 here. Okay, so okay, so this is like the lowest setting on the Venice. That's 200. 400's good as well. I shoot a lot of things in 400 myself. Got a clean image. So yeah, there's base 800. This is really where the big upgrade is with the Venice 2. We get, right. I think the second base on the original was 2500, which is already pretty high, but now we're up to 3200. Ooh, that's a green image on the left. That is a very base. green image on the left. It's important to point out that we had green lighting. This was yeah. like natural lighting. We had fluorescence overhead that were very much green. We removed the professional lighting we had here because we were striking for the day. So I, I just ruined your little setup. But yeah, that's no, okay. I forgive you. Uh, <laughs> professional, <laughs> amateur, professional, amateur. I hope people online aren't going, uh, I kind of like the no lighting like better. So, so 32. So this is 3200 with 800 being the base. So yeah, the Sony is looks like it's quite a bit cleaner here. This is just a still image, so that's why it's not, the noise isn't moving. Quite but a bit. It, it like gets blockier and splotchier mm -hmm. too. The Sony kind of just maintains. So it seems like at the like the native 800, these two cameras are actually very comparable. Sweet, so now we're looking at both native ISOs. I don't, I don't think you can pluralize ISO, but we're looking at both base settings on the Venice and they look identical. <laughs> One what? is just the the higher. 32 looks noisier. The left is an image. So oh, gotcha. So you're. Not but but I mean like flutter. you can you can see all the noise here and that mm -hmm. looks very clean. The Sony handles low light way 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 better. And I don't know that this is necessarily low light, but it's certainly it's just showing the ISO the, the, noise. The gain or the it, this test is just showing the the noise levels. Right. Yeah. This is eight thousand. Wow. So that's eight thousand. Look at this is I mean, look at the noise at 8,000. Yeah. I mean, the fact that even at 8,000 ISO, I'm not seeing any chromatic noise. Yeah. Is nuts. 12,800 is when. That's where it looks bad, and that's the top end. So that's. And again, compare that to the Canon at its highest ISO, mm -hmm. and then we compare that to the Sony. It's lost it. all the color. <laughs> yes. Really. Yeah. It's not handling this well, and that's at the 12,800. Wow, ISO. that's nuts that they're, they could push it even further if they wanted to. Sony absolutely could. This um, is a totally usable Im image and you could totally clean that up. That means that Sony basically isn't allowing anybody to adjust their settings in their camera to get it to a state where it's unusable. Right. Whereas I feel like Canon's just like, hey, if you want it, it's here. You're totally right. Sony is probably just saying like, nope, that's, 
this is for Hollywood motion pictures and not for documentaries. After using this, seeing Chase, our AC, operate this and sing his praises, why is this camera so expensive and why do you think objectively that this is being used right now in Hollywood so much? This is a very film production friendly camera. On set, I could ask for anything and within two clicks, my AC could boop boop and we were shooting in raw 8K. This, this camera is meant for production. The Canon, I mean, there was a couple of times where I, because I didn't have my side handle plugged in, I was like, ah, oh, I can't get to this setting. There's a button on my handle that's not on the body. I had to go into the menu and it's all on operator side, not on AC side. But devil's advocate for the Canon, that's what it's built for. It's built for the side handle yes. solo operator yeah. kind of format. The, the thing I gotta say is I am blown away at how much not better this camera is. <laughs> yeah. I was I was truly expecting to get in post and be like, all right, let's crush my camera. I am by no means suggesting that the Canon is as, as good of a camera as the Venice. Clearly this is a filmmaking machine. But as far as your image quality, like what you get from the camera just in a, you know, decent shooting environment, yeah. they're not dissimilar from one another. Absolutely. So it just depends on the use case. And when you're talking about a hundred million dollar Hollywood picture, you just want to make sure that there's no compromises. And right. I think this is that there's no compromise, right? The indie the strengths are perfect. The image all the way to the highest ISO is quite perfect. The image looks pretty good straight out of the camera. Obviously a really great colorist is gonna do oh, amazing magic with this. I, no, no one's gonna argue that Maverick didn't look stunning. Yeah. You know what I mean? But as a solo operator, as many of you guys are who are watching this, rest assured the <laughs> Venice 2 isn't necessarily better than your little hybrid camera. <laughs> in terms of image quality, maybe fight us in the comments down below. Let us know your thoughts. Buy us a beer today. If you're watching this, Man, oh, wait, shoot. we'd really appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and comment below. We gotta do that. Let yep. us know what your favorite part of the video was right now by commenting. Thank you guys so much. Taking the mic away.